Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8A garden and I have been sick for a week now and I'm finally feeling well enough to be out in the garden. So let's see what chores and things need to be taken care of out here. So like I said, I've been sick for about a week now. Nothing really bad, just like a head cold. And there's something about having a head cold when it's still like uh, 99 degrees outside. <laughs> I just, I couldn't get my, bring myself to come out here. And it's amazing how much the garden changes in just a week. And so I wanted to get out here today and I'm sorry, I'm distracted by a giant grasshopper that is up here. I'll show you all in a minute. I wanted to get out here today and kind of poke around in the back and figure out what needs to be taken care of. Um, I, there's a lot of pruning, there's some planting, there's some things that need to be cut back. There's just a lot of different things. So let's kind of go through all that, see what needs to be done, and enjoy exploring the garden after a week away. Look at that massive grasshopper just sitting up there waiting to eat all of my plants. <laughs> Okay, so we're actually gonna start in this area. Um, I planted up these baskets earlier this summer and they've been trimmed back a couple of times. These sweet potato vines, they're variegated sweet potato vines, are very happy. <laughs> they have enjoyed the weather so much, but I'm gonna go ahead and give them a trim back so we can see a little bit better about what's going on in here. I'm just going to make a big pile of trimmings today. Okay, that makes it a little bit better to see. Looks like I need to stake some tomatoes. And it looks like they've been eaten up. They're struggling. They've got spider mites. So we might do a little bit of cleanup on these. Then um, these are all my jalapeno peppers. They you know, made it through the summer and they're starting to produce again. But I've got some where it looks like we need, might need to do a little bit of harvesting as well and a little bit of prune back. So let's get started on that. Let's start with the tomatoes. Okay, so I've got a few steaks here. I've got some twine. I'm going to tie up a few pieces. And then I'll bring you guys in closer and we'll do a little trim back. These are in a little bit of rough shape. Now y'all know that vegetables aren't really my thing. I kind of just grow them for fun. I'm going to take off some of this, a bunch of this fruit is kind of just spoiled. Um, it's been eaten up and enjoyed by critters. So, trim some of that out. I'm going to trim off some of these lower branches that aren't really doing anything for the plant right now, but except for like suffering. <laughs> I am going to leave a few of the sucker branches just because they're in better shape than most stuff. This one over here is in a little bit better shape. Let's go ahead and get a steak in here. Get that pulled up a little bit. And then once again, I'm going to clean off anything that doesn't look good. Oh, we got a big old hornworm in here. So we'll pull him out. He ate my tomato that was there. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Yeah, go on somewhere else, dude. But I still got some good stuff going on this plant. So we'll see if it can recover. And then the purslane is doing really well. 
down here. I'm going to leave it for now. I know y'all, a bunch of y'all told me not to plant stuff with my tomatoes, but I'm doing it. <laughs> All right, let's see about harvesting some peppers. Okay, let's take a look at this side. So I got a lot of weeds <laughs> growing in here. Uh, let me see about pulling those out. And we got a tomato here. I'd already staked this one up, but we'll go ahead, trim it up a little bit. It also has some spider mites going. And it looks like it has some mealy bugs too. And then let's harvest some more peppers. Okay, and then <clears throat> the peppers I've been harvesting are Escamillo peppers and Jalapeno peppers. And um, been real happy with both. The um, Jalapeno peppers are called Jedi. And I did buy them because of Star Wars. And um, the Escamillo have been produce really well and they're kind of like a sweet pepper and you can leave them on the vine until they turn yellow but they're actually really good when they're green as well and I have not been diligent on keeping them fertilized they still done pretty well Okay, so I need to do some trimming on the willow. And I actually need to take out some larger branches, but I don't, I don't have the energy to do that today. And I don't want to push myself too hard. I, it's still really hot now. Um, we had some cooler weather and then it went back and like today it's supposed to be in the upper 90s. But um, I will say starting Wednesday, we're supposed to get a lot of rain and um, temperatures next weekend are going to be in the 70s. So I'm looking forward to that. But I do need to do a little bit of trimming over here. I have to trim my, my um, willow multiple times a year during the growing seasons. I need to get a different pair of clippers. My willow is very happy. I planted it here the first year when it did, so it's been five years, almost five years. And it was maybe six feet tall, the whole thing, um, when I planted it. It's obviously very happy. And the reason I planted it here is not just because I love willows, um, but we have some major drainage issues back in this corner and so there's a lot of just well, there's a lot of standing water here and um, we thought a willow might be really good because it can suck up a bunch of the water it's a natural way to help with drainage over here and we were right it's helped out a lot now hasn't fixed the problem because like where i'm seeing right here this soil tends to be a little bit more moist even during the summer and um but it has helped significantly, which I'm grateful for because I get this beautiful thing um, to help with an issue. You can get a different pair of clippers. <clears throat> now another great thing about the willow 
is it does provide some shade during the hottest parts of the summer for portions of my garden, or actually a significant portion of my garden back here. And so I love that about it. Okay, that definitely cleans it up where you can see a little bit better in here. So let's come over here and talk about the fennel um, and what I need to do with that and what I need to plant here instead. So over here is bronze leaf fennel and um, it's definitely gone to seed. It is a perennial for me in um, my area and um, I do love it. I love it for flower arranging, but I love it more so for all of the um, all of the insects that love it. But I have a couple of plants that look like they might have died. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them back all the way to the ground. I'm not gonna pull them out by the root. And I think I'm actually gonna cut a lot of this back right now. And I know a lot of y'all are gonna be like, oh, don't do it, because you know, the monarchs are coming. Y'all, there's not much left of these plants anyway. It's only the flowers and the monarchs prefer the leaves. And if I do this, I might get a little bit of new growth. And in fact, on some of these, I can see some new growth already, which is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give these a nice trim back for now. I smell like licorice. They smell good. And I definitely already have new growth at the base of some of these, which is wonderful. So you can kind of see this clears out this area a little bit. Looks like I've got a massive basil back here. It's a volunteer. Whew, I'll just pull that out for right now <laughs> so I can see what all's going. And I have a lot of nut sedge that comes up in these beds. And you really should dig them out, but I just pull them. And I don't mind pulling them every year, truly, in all honesty. Okay, so this clears this out a little bit. I'm also going to go in here and go ahead and cut back all the straw flowers that are in here. Um, basically the reason I'm doing that is I have some more plants that I want to work into this area and I need to be able to better see what's going on. And I will say my straw flower like really struggled this summer. It was just so hot. I'm going to cut back a little bit of this gonfrina that's come this direction. Okay, that looks good. That's opening this space up a lot. These marigolds are not in great shape. These are volunteers. I'm going to go ahead and pull these out. I have a ton of marigolds in a different bed. So I don't really need these here. And this is nice because it cleans out this whole area. I'm actually going to put this trellis right here over one of those um, fennel, bronze leaf fennel. And then I do have these little green things you see sticking up are perennials that I started. They are Fama scabiosas. I'm not sure what color they are, but they're still going. So I'm going to leave them there because they will take a couple of years to kind of give me quite a few blooms. All right, let's talk about what we're going to put in this bed. So right here, I have some crimson clover that I started from seed. And I've been wanting to grow it for specifically flowers, but it's also supposed to be really good for restoring nutrients, I believe, nitrogen to um, your beds and so I thought this might be fun to try and um, I got <laughs> these are a lot of plants in one so oh gosh their roots are already root bound but I want to go ahead and get these in the ground and this is supposed to be almost like a cover crop if you've ever heard of one and like I said it's about restoring a certain level of nutrients back into your garden 
and these were so easy to start from seed. I started them inside. I could have started them outside. Um, that would have been fine. I think they would have done well. It's just when I wanted to start them was the hottest part of the year, and I wasn't sure that I could guarantee that I could keep the soil moist enough outside on the top because these are just surface sown. I wasn't sure that I could keep it moist enough in order to be able to get the seeds to germinate. So that's why I decided to start them inside. And so I'm just gonna kind of work this area a little bit. Now I've got a lot of roots down in this garden, basically due to the um, bronze leaf fennel. Um, it has a massive root system. And I apologize for all the sniffing y'all. Just getting over this cold and I feel like allergies are part of the situation too, which sucks. So happy to get these out. And just ripping off the bottom of its root system. And this should give me some flowers. That would be awesome for some cut flowers. But those of you who have used clover as a cover crop, let me know how you liked it. Okay, so over here I'm going to be planting up three varieties of basil with the intention that this basil is only going to stay till probably end of October, a little bit into November, and that I will pull it out and put some hardy annuals here instead. So the three varieties, the first one um, I'm going to plant is called Spicy Saber, and I'll put a picture of it up. It has not done very well growing from seed. Um, it, it just looks weak and tired. <laughs> it just has not looked really good. And so um, I'm hoping that getting it into the ground will make a big difference regarding it. Um, maybe it will do a ton better. I'm not real sure. But compared to the other varieties of basil that I started, it has really struggled. But we'll go ahead and get it started over here. And I am adding some plant tone fertilizer to each space and there's still plenty of time for this basil to produce for me um, and when I say produce I mean in terms of culinary production and in production for my cut flower arrangements. The next variety I'm going to plant is called purple ruffles basil. And I've planted it many times before, and I really enjoy it and love it. And as I'm looking for my knife down here, and um, it always produces really well for me as well. And I like growing basil from seed. It's easy to grow from seed. You, you really, that is an area that you can seriously save some money if you want um, growing your basil from seed instead of buy, buying plants. So cheap. And a lot of my basil actually reseeds itself, so that'd be awesome if some of this reseeded itself. And I'm not one to like seriously stress about plants reseeding themselves. But this can be pretty intense reseeding, uh, reseeding. So if that's something that concerns you, that is something to consider. That basil can go a little bonkers. However, it's really easy to pull up. Okay, and then the last variety I'm going to plant is mammoth basil. And this is my first year growing it from seed. And it has done really, really well. So it's been very easy and very prolific. And I've actually already cut it back a couple of times because it's grown like crazy. And it smells really good. So I'm actually really excited to utilize this for a lot of culinary stuff. There's an asp on this one. I don't know if you can see it. It might be too far away. Be careful not to touch it. It's one of those furry caterpillars. All right, 
Let's get this watered in real quick. Okay, so as many of y'all know, I've been exploring um, air, air chrysanthemums. It's been going really well. It's my chrysanthemum bud. Um, I'll give you a more thorough tour in the future, but we have a lot of buds coming up. And so I'm so excited because for a lot of them, this is their first year to bloom. But I did start several cuttings from King's Mums um, this summer, and I did lose a few in the process. This first one is called Whiteout, and I lost it. To not do well right there this is not this is like how far other months have reached <laughs> so basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to just replace it with another cutting that i never actually got planted in the ground and that particular variety let me pull up some of the soil see what we got what we're working with this variety is called apricot alexis which is actually one of my favorite ones and this is a cutting that, that i got at the same time as that one that y'all just saw and so you can see the difference. This is a cutting. There's another one down there that's a cutting. And it's really different than that. The cuttings I got from King's Moms, so they were already rooted, um, but they're still very new plants. Whereas some of these larger ones back here are from Bluestone Perennials, and those were actual like plant plants. Um, they weren't just cuttings, they had very significant root systems. So let's go ahead and see this one, how it's doing. Oh my gosh, yeah, okay. Well, it's very happy here its roots have gone all the way through the system which is really really great so basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to work some plant tone in here and then i'm going to put this whole mound down into this space and um which will be really awesome i'm very excited <laughs> it does not have drip run to it however that area was very moist so i think it'll be all right for now but i probably will run drip a later point all of these bigger ones towards the back have drip run to them and I think that's one of the reasons that they've been so successful this year and these cuttings up front I did not run drip to these and I think that's probably one of the problems it struggled with so anyway I did want to just get that guy in there I still have three more cuttings that I have not planted that I actually rooted up in larger containers and I am glad I did that I wish I had done that earlier on with a lot of them but um, we will be having months this season so I'm very excited to show you once these all start blooming Okay, so one of the plants that I have not been enjoying this year is called Maximilian Sunflower. <clears throat> and I planted these from bare root a few years ago. It took them a long time to come to fruition. I'm just not into it, y'all. I don't really like them. So what I'm going to do is I'm cutting these back a little bit so that I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to try to just pull them out. No, I'm not going to dig them out. Yes, they probably will come back next year, but they are really easy to pull out when they're just starting. So I'll just remember that for next year and pull them out just as they are starting next year. But if you have Maximilian sunflowers, let me know. Like I, they're just so wonky. They fall over everywhere. They're hot mess express. <clears throat> the bees really love them pollinators love them I just I don't I think I have different plans for these windows these windows are my bedroom and I think I would like to see a different situation over here um, at some point something I think a little bit like more romantic than the sunflowers maybe climbing roses I'm not sure let me get all this stuff out of the way I don't in any way feel like I got all the roots, but we'll see what happens with all this back here. Okay, I'm done for now. Um, my energy is definitely not what it usually is, but it's fine. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to stop for now. I'm going to go recover it. And then I think I'm going to come out here and do a garden tour tonight just to show y'all what's going on. I did not do one in August. It's just too hot. 
So I think I'm going to come out here and show y'all a garden tour tonight um, for September. Depending on my energy level, I'll decide if I'm going to do like just the back or just the front or both at the same time. We'll see. But make sure you keep an eye out for that. Once the garden tour is done, I have a ton of harvesting to do. I didn't want to harvest prior to the garden tour because I wanted y'all to see everything that's here before I just come through and like harvest, take a bunch of it out. But you can see the garden is starting to rebound after the brutal summer. And we've had some reprieve on temps, but not complete reprieve, but it is coming. We are getting close. And we are at the end of September. Actually, I think today is October 1st. Yeah, I think that's October 1st. So I guess technically it's going to be an October garden tour, but we'll call it a September garden tour. Um, yeah, so today's October 1st. So I have about 45 days left of growing season before we get our first frost. So it's still lots of time, lots of um, capability for harvesting. Um, I have a lot to get planted in, tons of hardy uh, annuals that I started, lots of cool flowers, lots of perennials I started from seed. Um, so it's going to be fun and it's going to be a whirlwind till the very end once the winter hits. All right, you all, as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know my latest videos are up. And be sure to check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.